Welcome back uh, to this tutorial. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, uh, introducing or just trying to understand about uh, PLSQL stored procedures and functions. And uh, when we talk about uh, PLSQL, remember this is purely PLSQL stored procedures and functions. And uh, this is in relation to what we had really done. Um, in line with um, handling exceptions, um, using explicit cursors, um, and now we are here. So in this particular topic, we need to understand what is a stored procedure and what is a function. So in this lesson, um, we are trying to understand more on the named blocks, more on the named blocks. And remember, we had started by, uh, especially the PLSQL, by introducing the PLSQL blocks where we talked about uh, the two types or the three types uh, in whichever, I mean, in a, probably a way that you can explain them. For example, we started with something called anonymous block, which is actually a type of PLSQL block. And this anonymous block is also referred to as an, an uh, unnamed block. So a name is not attached to it. So if you want to, uh, rerun the same uh, block. It means that you have to write the entire block again so that you can execute a different results or the same results. Now, you cannot actually call that particular block. Then that is the reason why it is, uh, a name is not attached to it. So anonymous block was one of the uh, types of PLSQ block. And now we also have something called the named block. So the named block, was composed of two things. It's actually the, the functions and, um, and the procedures. And both of them are also referred to as the sub programs. So this is where we are right now. We are talking about named blocks. That is the procedure and the functions. And the reason is because a name is always attached to a procedure whenever it's being created. A name is always attached to a function whenever it's being created. So both of them are stored in the database. But again, we have the differences between them. For a procedure, procedure is basically meant to perform some actions. And it does, uh, it's not actually required to return a value. It's only in function that you are able to return a value. And that is why we are going to have a look at different examples. So in this lesson, or this lesson introduces us to these named blocks, which are also referred to as the sub programs. And uh, procedures and functions are PLSQL subprograms. So we are going to see what is the difference or how to differentiate between the anonymous blocks and the subprograms. So we are not more into understanding the anonymous blocks because we've come from that point, and now we want to understand the subprograms. And understanding the subprograms again that gives us the platform to differentiate between the two types of blocks. So. Procedures and functions are named PLSQL blocks, as I had said, that are also referred to as the sub programs. These sub programs are compiled and stored. Remember the two words, they are compiled and stored in the database. The block structure of the sub programs, that means a combination now, that is the block for procedures and functions. Remember when I'm using the word sub programs, I'm actually combining both procedures and functions. It's only when I want to talk about a single one, that is when I can refer them by their names. But if I talk about sub programs, I am actually combining both of them. So the block structure of the sub programs is similar to the structure of anonymous blocks. And these same sub programs can also be declared not only at the schema level, but also within any PLSQL block. That means we have different sections in their structure. For example, we have the declaration section, and this is an optional section uh, by the word go. We also have an executable section, which is mandatory. And if I can take you back on the declaration section, for this type, when we have the declaration section in the, the sub programs, we have some special keywords that are going to be introduced. For example, we are used to using the declare keyword, but again, we will still use the word is and as. 
IS and AS. So is and as can also be included. And we will be able to talk about it when we will uh, uh, having an, an example. So the execution section is also there, it's mandatory. And that of course leads you to use the begin and the end. And the last is either to have the exception section, which of course is an, an optional section. So this is just but an introduction to um, to, 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 to the subprograms. Now, what is the differences? Let me bring the differences between um, the anonymous block and the subprograms. What is their differences? And so um, I'm going to mention both sides. And uh, for one, let me have uh, like anonymous block, or I, I can even just write, okay, let me just have like anonymous block, or let me just do this. Let me open a word so that we can have the differences. <clears throat> Want something that at least can give you a clue of what is happening here. So once we have that, okay, I want to insert a table. Uh, so that we can have, so insert a table. So we need to have uh, two columns. We need to have, uh, let's say seven or eight. Okay. So at this point, uh, I'm going to give the differences uh, between the two. Okay, so here I'm going to have the anonymous, uh, let's say anonymous blocks. And on this other side, I'm going to have the sub programs. So number one, on this point, um, these are what is referred to as unnamed. Unnamed PLS, uh, PLSQL uh, blocks. Now on the other side, This one are named. This one are named. Number two, it's only compiled. So this one only compiled, let's say only compiled once, but this one can be compiled um, more than once. So you can compile more than once. Again, uh, so, Let's say compiled uh, more than once, compiled more than once. We also have another one, not stored. The database for this one, number three, they are stored. They are stored in the database. That is the differences. Number four, you can say cannot be invoked. That means um, you cannot actually use other applications to invoke or call them. For this one, it can, can be invoked. And the reason why it cannot be invoked, it's because it does not have a name. So this is the reason. It's because it is unnamed. So anything that is named, you can invoke. Here, we can see that the subprograms are named and therefore, they can be invoked, they can be called. Number five, uh, okay, do not, this one means do not return, uh, do not return values. But this point for sub programs, not all sub programs or not all of them return values. It's only, it's only functions that return, return, values with the return keyword. We'll see that practically. And then the last one, uh, we can say cannot check in parameters. But for this one, number six, this one can take, can take in parameters. So these are the differences between the anonymous blocks and the sub programs. The difference between anonymous block and the sub program. So this is exactly what we want to talk about. Now, 
So in this case now, I think uh, based on the information given, uh, we need now to get into um, the execution part, like how are they structured in terms of understanding the syntax, in terms of understanding uh, other related information, especially for, 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 for this. So for this one, we're going to have, especially based on the examples, we are not going to have like an, a syntax for sub program, no. Both of them are sub program, the procedure and functions. But when it comes to implementation, we need now to talk about how can we create a procedure? How can we create a function? And how can we use a procedure? How can we use a function of a, it has been created? And then later, we will come back and talk about something called uh, the packages. Um, and from there, we can now uh, also talk about other things because the package now is bringing up or grouping logically related sub programs. So in these related sub programs are examples of um, the procedures and functions. So if I want to capture, let me just increase this so that we can have a whole that default. Okay, so first thing first, you have to set set server output on. And then here, remember the anonymous block. We were able to start the anonymous block. We were starting with the declare. This time around, we are not starting with the declare. So we are supposed to have create or replace. Then we can start from the procedure. Procedure, then what is the name of the procedure? What is the name of the procedure here? Now, in this case, even before uh, having this, because a procedure requires you to either use some of the DMLs, whether you want to use that procedure to insert some values into a table. So I think I'm going to create a table. So create table, uh, let me call it depth as I want to select um, uh, or we Okay, let's insert. So create a table depth as a department ID, comma, department name from departments. Now, what I'm doing here, I'm creating a table from an existing table. We all know that if you describe this table, we have around four columns. But in this case, I just want us to display only two columns. And these two columns, are meant to be captured or they are meant to uh, be a structure of this particular table called depth. If I press enter, uh, table, okay. So I think it exists. So depth, uh, table view does not exist. Create table depth or select department, underscore ID department, underscore, oh, yeah, so sorry. I think I'm connected. So I need to connect as HR, HR, yeah. So now if I press enter, uh, name is already used by an existing uh, SCR. Uh, let me just have it again. Okay, we can just even have, um, Let's have this table, manage employees, uh, select or in short, let us create our own table. So create table, uh, let's say table music into bracket. I want the ID, which is a number. I can give the size, I want the name, and then Vacha 220. Or again, it exists. I've uh, created a lot of tables, okay, music. Okay, I think this one is enough, this one is okay. So I need to truncate table music, say that no content is there. So if I come and say select star, from from music yeah no rows selected and i know but up to now um, um i mean uh 
probably you know how to create a table. Uh, I think it's the simplest thing you can do to create a table. And that is it. So we're going to apply or we're going to use a uh, table music. So if you describe music, you can see that we have ID and we have name. We have ID and we have name. So we're going to create a procedure. We're going to create functions connected to this particular table. So let's do it. So here, if you want to create a procedure, just use create or replace then the word procedure, and then the name of your procedure. So I want this procedure to hard. So I can call what? I can call hard music. So hard music means that we are adding some columns to that particular, that particular table. The same information, you can push it to departments, to employees. You can now expand this particular knowledge now of creating or replacing procedure, and then you end up having that. Now, for this case, what do I mean when it comes to create or replace? For example, create means you're creating that procedure. Replace means, replace means that if this procedure of this name exists, then it should be replaced. Then from there, uh, you have to say has. You see, you have to say, uh, okay, you have to say is, and then we can just press enter. Now, from this perspective, we need now to attach or connect, connect this department. So I want to have the ID, or I can just create a variable. Uh, this variable I can call v underscore ID. And then uh, we can just come and say music. If you remember uh, the issue of using the percent type, you can just say music.id um, percent type. You can say v underscore name, then music.name percent percent type. And then from there, we can come and say begin. <clears throat> so this is just to assign a data type, but we know you can also use v underscore id number v underscore name, Vacha2. From there, we have now to attach. We want to assign some default values to that so that we can see the outcome of this particular procedure. We have different ways of bringing up the procedure. Now, this one, I want the music ID to be 100. And then v underscore name, uh, I want the music name to be something called, uh, let me have it as rapper, you see? Then from there, we want to insert. So insert into music values into bracket. We are inserting V underscore ID, comma, V underscore name. You see? And then we can come and say DBMS underscore output dot put underscore line into bracket. We can have a sentence. You can say inserted, um, then uh, for this case, I'm still looking for my simple. Okay, don't worry about this. So uh, you're looking for that. And then here I need to bring up, if you remember this, this is the row count. And this one is a, um, this is like SQL attribute for increases cursors. So I need to bring it again to that. And then from there, I can just have a message like row. And then here I will come and end. And there it is. So if I press enter, look at that procedure, procedure created. So procedure created. Now, this means that if I come back to select, let me select star from music. Now, no rows, no rows selected, no rows selected. So from this perspective, I have managed to create a procedure using simple terms. I've managed to create a procedure using simple terms. 
but yet the information, the VID, which is 100, and VID wrapper has not been assigned or has not been inserted since we are talking about the one of the DNLs, which is actually insert. So how can we go about, how can we go about this? So to use a procedure now to perform its function, so that, uh, which means based on this procedure, this procedure is meant to insert some values into the table. You can still create a procedure that updates. You can still create a procedure that deletes. You can still uh, create a procedure that selects. But for this one is about insert. So how can we now implement the insertion uh, method using the same same procedure? So what happens is you start with the word begin and then press enter. What is the name of the procedure? It is add underscore music. And then now you terminate. And this is the simplest, this is the simplest way you can go by. So if I put that and press enter, you can see PLSQL successfully completed. So now if I come back and select star from music and press enter, now you can see Android and wrapper. So the first row has, has been inserted. You see the first row has been inserted. So procedures and functions. Creating a procedure and function is, an, is, a, is, a, is something else. So you have to create the procedure and function or create procedure alone, create function alone, that is one way. Now, executing that procedure to work is a different, is a different thing. So in other words, this part, this part is all about creating a procedure. This part, this part, uh, where is it? Uh, this other part, this part is all about invoking the procedure. So the invocation, remember we say that with sub programs you can invoke. That means you can, you can call them by name and then it performs its work. Call them by name, it works. So what happens is, this is just the simplest way on how to come up with a procedure. Although there are so many other ways. So we're going to have a look at different other ways on how, how to bring up the same statement. The same, same statement. Now, um, so what happens is, I want us to also have another example of a procedure and then two examples for procedures and two examples for, um, for function. So what happens is uh, another point, another point for creating a procedure <clears throat> or another way of, of um, creating a procedure is just to use some simple terms. Let's say, for example, I want to compare the parameter modes or I want to um, work with the modes. You see, we have around three modes. And when I talk about modes, we have, for example, in, we have out and we have in out. These are procedures parameter or they are sub programs parameters. So all these are parameters. Now, when we talk about in, in parameter gives an input to the sub program. So whenever you are allowing or whenever you are typing something, you see, for example, given the example above, given the example above, given the example to this, this is a procedure. This procedure automatically we've inserted some values at the time of procedure creation, 100 and wrapper. Now we've not uh, assigned some values. We've not actually assigned 100 and wrapper after the procedure has been created. It means that the procedure was created while the values are already initialized. So what happens is, this one we are talking about the out parameter because we are trying to capture, we are trying to capture some values from, uh, from the procedure. So what happens is the in parameter means to give inputs to the sub programs, gives input to the sub program. Out means get outputs from the sub program. And then we also have a combination of the two in out so we have out we have in we have in out 
So the in out here we have right uh, the overwriting. So what is most important is the out and the in. So let's just one use uh, or use one of these. So I'm going to create or replace. Uh, let's talk about procedure. And then let's call the procedure. Um, we can call it, um, let's say music proc or P, let me just use P music. And then into bracket, we can just have, um, let's say the PID, or we can just have a variable attached to it. Or let me just use this. Since we have the employees table, why can we use the employees table? So, uh, so you can just create or replace a procedure. Procedure. Let's have the name of the procedure. Let's call it query underscore m. This is the name of my procedure. And then into bracket, we want to have the procedure ID. And then we can say in. And we can attach, let's say attach here. So the P, PID, this is the procedure ID. And this is represents the employee ID. Uh, from there, we can have, let's say the P name. P name represents the last name, probably one the last name. Or we can just also have like EID. We can have EL name so that we can know. EL name, EL name. And then we can also have E underscore sal for, not sorry. So for this one, it is virtual virtual two, comma, we can still have E underscore sub, and then we can have it as number. So this represents, then come and say is. So all these represents what? Represents the values or the, number, uh, the columns that are in employees table. EID represents employees ID. I'm using in, EL name, EL name or, um, the, 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 the employee's last name, it is Vacha. The employee's last name is Vacha. And I think I have forgotten to put something there. Uh, let me just clear the screen. Okay, I forgot to put, I should give like out. So this means we are supposed to get an output. And then for the salary, we can just still use what? Use out. And just still use out. So out number, then that is okay. Remember here I'm using the procedures with parameters. So in, out, out. So we expect to key in, to give the input. That means we are supposed to supply the employee ID and it should give us the last name and the salary. So then come to the beginning. Then we'll say select, uh, I want to select, Okay, last underscore name, comma, salary, into, so we want to have uh, the E underscore L name, comma, E underscore sal, from, from employees, where uh, employee underscore ID equals to, E underscore ID. And then from there, because it's a procedure, when you end a procedure, you're supposed to end with the name. Now, this one is not mandatory, but it is uh, advisable that you terminate it or you end it. And then now the forward slash and press enter. Look at that. The procedure has been created. Now, the work of this procedure is to do what? The work of this procedure is to give us the results of the last name and the salary. If you look at this, last underscore name, salary. So these are what we want by supplying what? By supplying the, the employee ID. 
So the in parameter means that you give an input to the sub program and the out, we are supposed to capture the output of the sub program to capture the output of the sub of the sub program. So here it means that if we are to work with these parameters, if we are to work with these parameters, then it's advisable that we get the results. So what happens is, if I want now to execute this, I can just say execute, then you can say query uh, <clears throat> underscore, okay, or query underscore m into bracket. If we supply, let me try, let me try uh, for this particular employee. Um, so query, so we have the begin uh, execute query M. So we're supposed to have all the information coming out. Okay, so let me supply uh, from this perspective. Let me look at it. So I think we're supposed to supply the EID. We have the EL name. We have the outcoming. So the procedure has been created. This is how we tend to execute. Okay, let me just use the other way around. So if you can just come and say begin the name of the procedure. The name of the procedure is query underscore M. So we have query underscore M. Then we end. Uh, sorry, sorry, I've just forgotten to key in something because you're supposed to attach a value here. And the values given are supposed to um, to be captured. Supposed to be captured by the number of columns that are being mentioned. So here it means that um, so we're supposed to supply the EID. That means the input. Then the last name we're supposed to get as the output. And then from there, we can have the information coming out. So what happens here, uh, let me try, uh, because if you remember the in parameters are passed as read only values from the polling environment is the procedure. And uh, any attempts to change the value of an in parameter results in a compile time error. So I think for this one, um, I think for this one, it's not a complete, yes, the procedure has been created, but we're experiencing an error because anytime I want to change this value. Let's repeat it again. Uh, we have this one, employee ID. I want to supply it as, I don't know, 126. So it results to an error, wrong number of types of arguments in call. Let me just have this. So we know the last name is Irene. And the salary, I don't know, is it 24,000? Okay, so with this one means that, uh, let's just do uh, a query that is well structured because if we try to execute this, we are going to end up with an error because anytime I'm trying to supply a value here, I'm getting an error. So now for the in parameter, I think we can just use it in a single one instead of using in out. Uh, you see, when you use in and out, sometimes uh, the out is being overwritten by the in, and it results uh, to this. Let's just do one more example. And this time round, we see how it works. Now, let me update. Um, let us just do this, create or replace procedure. Let's say procedure. And um, let's say raise underscore salary. A procedure to raise the salary. I want again the PID. So this time around, let's just use only a single. 
a single, um, we'll just use number, and then comma, we can use, um, let's say percent. Now it's only one single parameter that I'm using. If it is in, it is in all of them. So P percent. And then E number, and then into bracket, then you can say is. Now, uh, the, the value here, the two values, that just tells me the second line. Then come to begin. Let me test this. I want to update, uh, update employees. And then from this, we can set salary <coughs> equals to salary multiplied by, uh, sorry, sorry. So it's a continuation, uh, sorry, uh, I don't know. So it is salary, then star, don't worry about that. Um, then into bracket, I can just have one plus uh, P underscore percent. So I want to calculate it in percentage uh, divided by 100. Then let's say where employee underscore ID equals to P underscore ID, which of course it is this. From that point, I want to end raise underscore salary. <clears throat> now let's see the yeah, procedure created. So don't worry about the complication that is coming here. Now what I'm updating, I'm updating the records or the rows in employees table where I'm setting the salary, which is actually the actual salary multiplied by the percentage. So one over the percentage. So I'm going to add whether it is 70%, percent that percent plus one, I'm going to do that. So let us execute this and see what happens. Execute raise underscore salary into bracket. Let me check like 126, this one is the employee ID. Then I'm giving 10 as the percentage. So if I press enter, you can see uh, PLSQL procedure successfully completed. Then let us confirm, uh, select star from employees. Okay, let's say select first name, comma salary from employees, where employee underscore ID equals to 176. Who is this person? It is actually Jonathan, Jonathan. Now let me execute it once more time. This time round, I want to put 20 and we see whether this value has changed. Uh, let me just even execute again. PLSQL uh, successfully completed. Let's come again to select. Look at this. It is that one 218. It is that one 218. Now, in short, this is a procedure for updating. I'm trying to update someone's salary. And you can see. I am being allowed to give an input to the sub program. So that means I'm able to supply the, the PID or I'm able to supply the employee ID. And of course, with the percent value, this is the, the, the value I expect. So both of them are meant to be an input into the sub program. And that is what is uh, makes the difference between this one and the other one. So if you bring in uh, let's say both parameters the in and out, one is going to override the other. One is going to override the other. And that is the simplest you can go with uh, the procedures. That is the simplest you can work or you can actually use the procedures, which is something more similar to the functions, which is something more similar to the functions. And uh, for the functions, I just want to do one thing. Uh, or one example on functions. So for functions, we are able to create the function. And at the same time, we can also um, invoke the function. We can also invoke the, the function. So there are three stages of uh, using a function. You can actually create a function, a long function or a function that uh, is just um, 
that uh, can be, um, that has, let's say, the in parameters and the function that does not have the in parameters. So what we can do is we can start by creating a function. And this function is simple uh, because I want a function that, take, that checks the salary. I want a function that checks the salary. Now, so in this case, I can have create function. Remember this one is also a way to create a function without replace. So I can just use create or replace a function. And then we can just use a simple function. We can just say create or replace function and um, with a function, we can just say, call it, let me just call it check underscore sum. And then a function, because a function is required to return a value, then we expect to give us this, to return a Boolean value. So this function is for checking the salary. So the return, uh, the expectations, the data the, the type to be returned is actually a Boolean. Is it a yes or no? or is an information that gives us yes or no. Then from that point, I'm going to have uh, the DID, DID for department ID. And then I'm going to have it as a number. Um, yeah, you can have it like 10. Then again, I can just use, uh, I need to have the EID, which is actually the employer ID. I can still have 10. And then again, I need to have, uh, let's say the sum, which of course I know it is 10. And then lastly, we can have something called uh, the A salary. Let's say A sal, A sal for average salary, for average salary. So here we can just use uh, A sal for average salary. So here again, we can just use what? So because these tables, because all these are meant to be captured within the employees table, for ASAL or the average salary is nowhere. So what I can do, I can just use the old way or the other way of doing, assigning a data type, percent type. Say that it knows exactly what it's supposed to do, that the data type is supposed to be in line with the salary column in employees table. Then from there, I need to begin. And then I'm going to assign a value to the employee number. So EID, let's say I'm going to assign 205, or let me assign even 280. So I know that this value does not exist. <coughs> the employee ID does not exist, does not exist. Then from here, I need to select, uh, let's say salary, uh, department ID into department ID into this one is into sal that is um, into sal and then into DID. Now I am mapping sal into what into this variable and I am mapping department ID into DID. So into sal comma DID. And then from, uh, ensure you have the right keys, employees, where employee underscore ID equals to EID. So I want you to follow it um, pole pole as we move forward, then you terminate it. And then we come back again um, into the same thing. This time around, I want to re-edit. So here, instead of this, I'm going to have uh, AVG salary. So I'm looking for the, the salary, that is the average salary, into, into this point, which is actually a, uh, a sal. Into what? Into this, the A sal, because I'm talking about the average salary. Then from employees table, where employee, uh, or where department, let's change this. Where department ID equals to 
DID. Where department ID equals to DID. Then press enter. Then from there, we need to talk about now about the if statement. So if, um, if sal is greater than a sal, if sal is greater than a sal, that means the salary is greater than the average salary, then what? We want to return a value. So return what? Return true. Else return, else return false. And then we end if, if you remember the if statement. And then here we need to have the exception. Exception when no data found, then return, return null. And then we end. You end it and then you can just press enter and do that. You see function, function created. So this function is a function that is meant to check the salary, is actually meant to check the salary. And the value to be returned is a Boolean. So Boolean how? We expect to have true or false or null. The condition is what? If the actual salary is greater than the average salary. So we are going to supply the employee ID and supply the department ID and see what happens. So going down here, uh, once the function has been created, it is high time for us now to use the function. So the name of the function is check underscore sal, um, which is actually used to determine whether the salary of a particular employee is greater than or less than the average salary of all employees working in the same department. So the function returns true if the salary of the employee is greater than the average salary of the employees in the department. If it's not greater, then it returns false. If no data is there, then it returns null. And uh, note this, the function is checking for the salary of an employee whose employee ID is, is what is 200 and 270. 270. So let us invoke, let us invoke, um, <clears throat> let us invoke now or call the function. So I'll just say if uh, into bracket check sal. So the name of the function is check underscore sal uh, is null. What happens if it is null? Then here now we use the dbms underscore output dot put underscore line into bracket. We can say the function returned null. Let's say do due to an exception. Remember this one is just a message you can just pass by. And then again, we can have other options. So what happens we can have else if, else if check sum into bracket, then here we need to have a message uh, that let's say, the salary, the salary is greater than the average, the average salary. The average salary, you can just say else, now the same thing, the salary is less than the salary is less than, and then we end, we end if, and then we end. Look at that, PLSK procedure successfully completed. PLS procedure successfully completed. But let me set server output on. Press that and look at this. The salary is greater than the average salary. The salary is greater than the average salary. So this is um, a condition or is actually a function. 
how we can create a function and how we can invoke the function. So both the procedures and functions, they can, they can be, um, they can be created or replaced. And again, they can invoke. For example, if I describe, uh, let's say check underscore sal, look at this. Function check sal returns Boolean. Function check sal returns Boolean. So this means that you can check the arguments and return uh, type of the function by just using by just using that. And we have so many other examples we can use when it comes to uh, the functions. So when it comes to the functions. So I think that is a brief information or a brief intro to how to use uh, procedures, how to use functions, what they are, what they stands for, what is their differences, and at least one or two examples of each one. And for that, I'll see you uh, in the next video, which is based on uh, the packages and the triggers.